Hey everyone, I just wanted to make a quick video on uh, um, building models, specifically for that uh, Dirk Kana. The question is about uh, what did we do for the model, how did you build that model? Uh, what I like to do is start with some existing topo data, um, so you're not actually designing it, you're kind of matching with what you have, so you have that existing data, so um, you can kind of see here that though this surface looks uh, pretty good here, um, there's some things in here that just make it maybe rough for machine control. So you can see that I've done kind of a surface slice review. So the red line is going to be my topo line. And then the gray line is going to be what we are going to create or that we're going to work on here. So it kind of gives you that, that, uh, that visualization that it's kind of uh, segmented, if you will. So there's a point here and a point here and it draws a straight line. So you don't have that nice curve over the top. So that's what your, your dozer is going to cut to. Um, and whatever that line may be so we could kind of take a look at it and measure from here to here you know and in this sense it's almost two tenths so mm -hmm. in what we're looking at here it's you know two tenths is not probably that big of a deal but when you see your blade that's two tenths over the, the existing surface or taking two tenths off the top of a whoop that gets to be kind of a big deal if you will so um, that just kind of gives you that perspective, if you will, and it just really evens out some of those transitions for where the wheels are going, because as you know, that the automatics will cut right to the grade. So, so first thing we need to do is um, is we need to kind of get a center line here. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to turn off some things here, so we can kind of start from scratch a little bit. So this is my existing topo data here. You can see all of these points um, are all the points that were taken onto that. And then the SCS surface brake line is these um, points on the outside. So this is kind of my um, area that I want to create this surface. So I need to create a center line, which I'm going to convert to us to an alignment. So I'm going to do that with a line string. So what I'll do is I'll select line string up here. I've got it. I've named it. I've got it on a, a layer so that I can turn it off and on. Push OK here. So now what I'm going to do is is just kind of freehand something in here. So uh, I need to have my starting point, so I'll click in my coordinate system here. And then right out of the gate, there's a small little um, curve you can see here. So just to kind of, again, to stay away from that segmented um, item here, I'm just going to go like so. And then you can kind of see that it uh, creates that smooth curve, if you will, here. So um, throughout for that horizontal um, section. So now I'm going to change it to straight section. And I'm just going to line it out here, just kind of eyeball it out. Oops. So you can always hit Control-Z and then hit Add. So what it's doing is it's just snapping to my surface vertices. I could go down and turn my snap functions off, but um, we're not going to get that carried away today. So, so now I've got my 2D alignment or my 2D line work there. So what I need to do now is create an alignment or convert that line to an alignment. So I'll go up to create alignment. Um, I'm going to put it on the layer that I want it to have. So it'd be that demo center line because this is what I'm doing as a demo. Um, and I'm going to use existing line. So I'm going to take that line I just drew. So you can see I can select it here, if you will. So it's red. And now you see I've selected it. Um, it's going to make me name it. Demo alignment. Push OK. And now you can see here. I've got my demo alignment and I've got all of my um, functions along with that as far as what that demo alignment looks like. So um, so now what I can do is uh, I can create a, uh, uh, I need to create a vertical alignment based off of that. So you can kind of see that there's grade breaks along there, but they're going to be again segmented, straight line, straight line, straight line. So. Um, I've already got one kind of set up here. So what I'm gonna do here is go down to the bottom here and you can see on this, it's the same thing, horizontal alignment. It's got a, um, a bunch of segments throughout uh, and the vertical alignment now has some of these vertical curves. So uh, when I line this out here, I get a surface profile. Um, so then I can edit actually in this window. So I can grab any one of these nodes. If I select on that um, alignment here, I can move it around um, so it's a lot easier to modify in the sense, if you will, right? So now if I come over here, I'll just delete out the bottom here. 
uh, grab both of these. So now you can see that that's that straight line. So what I need to do is insert a row. I'll leave it as a grade break. So a grade break, break will be a segmented line as far as one point to the other point draws a straight line. Just think of it that way, similar to a topo data. So I'll put it right in the middle and then I can, I can edit these. I can punch in elevations or I can just click on the screen here. And then it positions that line. And then what I'm going to do is create another row, but this time I'm going to make it a symmetrical curve. And then I'll just put it right at that grade break, if you will. So um, again, I'm just going to click on it. And then I'm going to say 10 feet for that curve length. So it'll be 5 feet, 5 feet from the center of that. So you can say, kind of see it doesn't really line up with what I'm looking for. So I can grab any one of these squares and put it down. So I'll just move this down like this. And I'll come over here and I'll grab this one. <laughs> this really kind of cleans that up now so you can see there's that nice curve curvature to it um, so it looks really good so if you wanted to if you wanted to do this in a sense where you kind of got good at it you could kind of see what the the tops and the the valleys peaks and valleys were doing so um, for instance here on the side here uh, we're at like a 91.75 and down here we're at a uh, 90. 90.25 so what are we we're figuring on there's probably about let's just say there's two feet so if I wanted to I could go in here um, I'd have to uh, lengthen out my alignment here so let's maybe just do that real quick just for fun here I'll just make it straight out And do it the same distance and we'll just go another let's just say 50 feet so it'll extend that out at the end there if I wanted it to and now I can come in here and say um, so what I can do now is is put my uh, Peaks and tops at exactly, for instance, 25 feet. So um, my grade break here is um, if I were to start something at a even number so I could do it. So if I wanted to go out, um, let's just, if I wanted to go out from three here, so that's my bottom here is my symmetrical curve. So two plus 99, so let's just call it 300. So then I could come in here and say three plus 25 and then the valley is at 89 so let's go up to and two feet from there so then I could put in a 92 right 92 and let's just call that a symmetrical curve and on top of that I am going to do seven feet so now it should create another piece of this alignment see and now I could go down again, so figuring out my valley, I could go 3 plus 50, down to that 89.5, and then I could say it would be, let's just say 4 feet on the 4 feet on the bottom. So now you can see that all the way through, again, 3 plus 75. 92, seven foot. So now you can see I'm kind of creating that. It's just a very engineered whoop section at that point. So, um, so it's it can be very consistent. Um, I know uh, track builders are very um, um, particular in that sense. So if there's that distance, you can kind of create that on the uh, model so that it is consistent, uh, built right into the model. So. Kind of a cool little scenario here so um, next thing you're going to do is uh, actually create that corridor so what we'll do is we'll say um, create the corridor and then we would pick what alignment we would want on it so the whoop section pick the whoop section um, we'll just call it test 
I'm going to go into my plan view and I'm going to turn off uh, the warp section so I can see it. So I'm going to say zero and I'm going to say insert. So that'll give me the option to insert now. So what I'll do is I'm just going to do something very simple. So um, I can plug in a number here or I can go out here and say this is where I want to be. So it's about 11 and a half feet, right? And I'm going to say at 1%. You can see it's sloped there. You can change it to whatever you want. And I'll say add. So now you'll see it pull out from there. And then what I'll come in here, I will say offset to the other way, to the other side. Uh, slope is going to be uh, negative 1. And I will say add, and then you'll see it pop out over here. Look at that. So that's a good point here. So if I say edit, you can see um, it went over from the previous node. So I, what I need to do is say from the whoop section, which is a center line, and then measure that out again. And so then that would bring me out to 18 feet, which makes a lot more sense. Or save. And now I have a corridor surface all the way along here. So prior to go in my 3D view, you can see that surface come to life. So there's a lot of ways to build this. Um, we've been kind of uh, playing with a couple different ways um, that seem to work out pretty good and could be a little bit faster. Um, but this will give you the, the by far the most cleanest um, consistent surface when it comes to machine control. So uh, let me know your thoughts. See you.